world in which we live is full of uh, countless things that make us afraid. Some people fear spiders, they fear snakes, uh, they fear heights, other, others fear highways, and some fear uh, tight spaces. My son, he's afraid of the vacuum. Amen. So he starts running. Uh, actually, my wife was uh, vacuuming today, and he was hiding behind my legs. Uh, he's scared of the vacuum. And so th this man, so as a boy in third grade, he went out to the he went out on a field trip to a state park to explore a cave. And so he goes on to say, in a single file line, we entered a small cave. And so he remembers feeling very anxious about being in a tight quarter. He also had fear of dark, darkness, amen. And so they were in a cave, so it was very dark in some, some areas. However, when the teacher asked if any ha was afraid or had a problem entering the cave, and so he did not want anyone to think he was scared or intimidated, especially the girls that were in line, amen, so... I don't know if he had a crush on them or, you know, just us guys, we don't like to show fear to women. Amen. So he goes on to say, my fear of people's negative perception was stronger than the fear I had of the cave. And so I want to look at this evening at a holy fear. And so this is a fear of the Lord. It does not mean that we're afraid of the Lord. But it's that we're in awe of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is an awesome reverence. And altogether respect for his greatness, goodness, and the gloriousness of God's nature. And so let's read our scripture here in Isaiah 6, 1 through 7. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, or Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the, a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood a seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. Amen. Multitasking. Amen. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook. At the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of an unclean, midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And so the one of the seraphims flew to me, having his hand, amen, with a burning coal, and he held it and t with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Let's pray this evening. God, we praise you. We thank you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, this evening that uh, we would have a reverence for you, my King, that we would be in awe, Lord God, of your majesty, all that you are, Lord God, all that you do, Lord God, in our lives, Lord God, that we would direct our hearts to you, my God, not just us, Lord God, but all humanity, Lord God, that they would know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Lord God, and you want to get involved in, in their lives. We thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I just uh, want to give you a brief history, amen, of this king. So in Second Chronicles 26, amen, you see this king, Uzziah. And so the scripture we read was after, amen, the king had died. But so this king, uh, in Assyrian records, amen, he reigned for 42 years. His uh, reign marked the height of uh, Judah's power. He fought successfully against other nations. He extracted tribute from the Ammonites. Judah expanded westward with his settlements in uh, Palestine. So during the period of Uzziah's reign, the nation prospered, and the desert area 
Judah's were reclaimed by water, and um, Jerusalem's wall were uh, reconstructed, towers were added, and engineers of war were mounted at strategic points. A large army was also maintained. The nation's prosperity under Uzziah was considered to have been the result, listen to this, of the king's fidelity to Yahweh, the king's fidelity to God. According to biblical record, Uzziah's strength caused him to become proud, which led to his destruction. He attempted to burn incense in the temple, an act restricted to priests only. When the priests attempted to send him from the temple, they tried to take this man out of the temple. He was so exalted in his heart. He was so exalted in his mind that when the priest, amen, tried to extract him from the temple, he got enraged. He got mad. And so he, he became angry. And so immediately he was stricken with leprosy. So his son uh, Joatham ruled in his father's place until he died. And so this all happened in Second Chronicles 26. And uh, it just reminds me of another, another woman, amen, who got struck with leprosy. And uh, it was uh, Moses' uh, sister, uh, Miriam, amen. And so the problem, amen, with this man and this, this woman, Miriam, is that they were exalted in their hearts. And so how many of us know that when you and I, amen, we win spiritual battles, no doubt, this man, he had won battles for God. He had won battles, amen, for the kingdom of God. And so what had happened to him is that he became spiritually, he became exalted in himself. And I want to say this evening that we can be the same way as, as the people of God, is that we've won some battles, amen. We've, we've had, amen, some, some battles behind our belts, amen, that we've won, that we can point at and say, okay, I went through that. I've gone through that. And here, here I am now. And, uh, and so, amen, we as a people of God, amen, can, can get exalted in our hearts or in our lives. And that's what happened to this king is that he was exalted in himself because God had given the, the victory, because God, amen, he was a, a man after God's own heart. And so God, amen, had given this man victory. But what he did was he, he let pride get in the way. He let pride get in his heart, amen. And thus also in the book of Joshua, how many of us know that God gives the children of Israel the promised land? He tells them that he's going to give them this land. And so after God had gotten rid of the, the first generation that was in the wilderness, and the second generation possesses the land, they also became exalted. Amen. And so he has given us spiritual victories through his son, Jesus Christ. He has given us, amen, you and I this evening, amen, through his son, through the blood of Jesus, amen. How many of us know that God's spirit is poured into our lives? He empowers you and I. And so we have to be careful about this. And so you see this in God's people as God, you know, prospers them, amen. God gives his people, amen, the children of Israel special rights as his people, there are people like no other people. They're defeating nation after nation. And um, so they, they also became exalted in their hearts and in their lives. And not only that, but God gave the Jews the right to be his special people. And so there were people that were set apart. Amen. And no doubt you see, amen, them rejecting the Son of God. Amen. They, they became so proud in themselves, so proud in their religion Amen, that they, they rejected the Son of God, the one that came to die for you and I. Amen, actually came to die for all humanity. And so I want to take a look this evening at a reverence for God. And so the angels in our scriptures, they understand this. They understand the, the reverence they need to have towards the Lord. It says, above him stood a seraphim. Each had six wings, with two he covered his face, 
and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew, and one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of glory. And the foundations, the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And so this is talking about the representation of Jesus Christ. And God is calling out, holy, holy, holy is he. Think about this. That all heaven is shaking, the threshold, amen, the post of God's house are shaking, amen, because they're in God's majesty, they're in God's presence, and the angels know this, amen, they know, amen, what it is to be in God's presence. And so, amen, this is a reminder to you and I of how holy our God is, amen, and how of an awe that you and I need to have towards him. Because how many of us know that we can forget sometimes. And so the priests were also taught to revere God and his presence. They would have rituals, amen, that would remind them. And, amen, a testimony to them of what God had done for them. And so this was, amen... No doubt, a lot of the rituals that they did, so they would not forget. In Exodus 28, 35, it says, Aaron shall wear a robe when he ministers. They had to be addressed a certain way. And its sound shall be heard when he goes alone into the Holy of Holies uh, before the Lord. And when he comes out, lest he dies. Amen. And so this is talking about, amen, when the priest would go into the Holy of Holies, they would have bells on, on their hems, on the bottom of, of their, um, I guess, their dress attire. And so as they're walking into the Holy of Holies, this, this would tell the other priests that were behind the veil, amen, that he was still alive. And that, you know, he the, the offering or... Being accept, I mean, uh, before God was being accepted, and so He would come back out, and they would know, Amen, that the priest was was still there, that He was still alive, that the offering before God had had been accepted, and so, Amen. God gave them these requirements as a reminder of His holiness, of a, a reminder of His righteousness, Amen, and who He was. In Joshua 4, uh, 20 through 24, uh, it also talks about the priest, amen. It says, and those 12 stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. And he said to the Israelites, when your children ask their fathers in the time to come, what do these stones mean? You shall let your children know Israel came over the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over. As the Lord your God did to the red, did at the Red Sea, which He dried up for those, for for us until we passed over, that all the people of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, and that you may reverence and fear, Amen. The Lord your God forever. And so, what this was was a memorial to them, Amen. That they were coming into the Promised Land. Amen. And so they were to set up these stones. They were, they actually represented each tribe of the children of Israel, and they they were to be done by the Levites. Amen, because they were the holy men of God. They were set apart for God, and so they were to set up a memorial. Amen, of what God had done for them, and so they took up these stones. And not only that, they had uh, God had dried up. Amen. The waters. And so let me say this evening that, that our memorials have not changed. God has given us vision, amen. Memorials are, amen, in our lives can be prayer, the word of God, fasting, amen, and investing in people. And uh, so we cannot come into God's presence any way we want. I hit on that a couple, I think a, a week ago. In my sermon about talking about coming into God's presence with sin in our hearts. Amen. How many of us know that God wants us to repent from our sin? He wants us to turn away from our sin. And so King Uzziah in our scripture comes to God in his backslidden pride before him. 
Amen. He was right with God. But he was backslidden at the point. And so he wants, amen, to bring God an offering. And God's not having it. And so he gets stricken with leprosy. God says, this is not, this is not happening. You're, you're not right before me. And so Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, uh, no redemption, revelation of God, the people perish. But he who keeps the law of God, which includes that of man, blessed, happy, fortunate, is he. Amen. And so the king in our scripture, amen, he loses vision for the things of God. And so in the Bible, when the king or the leader would lose vision, so would all the people also of Israel. And so we read so many times as, as uh, these kings, amen, these judges would do evil in God's eyes, amen, so would his people. But I want to say this evening, thank God for a man of God. And so Isaiah saw he was connected with God. And so God was able to give him a vision. Isaiah 6, 8 through 13, I heard a voice and the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and whom will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to the people, Keep on, here, uh, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull. The ears heavy, uh, blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. Thus I say, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitants and houses without people and land and the land is desolate and waste. And the Lord removes people far away and forsakes uh, places, amen. And the forsaken places are uh, many in the midst of the land. And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again like the terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains when it is fallen. And it, it, it goes on to say, the holy seed is the stump. And so I want to, amen, and so when I was, I was, last week I was reading this scripture, and it so reminded me of what you and I are going through today. How many of us know that the streets are empty, amen, there's, you, you go out, amen, and where, where there was people, there's none anymore. And so this, this, this scripture that I was reading was very scary to me because Amen. How many of us know that sometimes uh, prophecy, I mean, not sometimes, prophecy repeats itself. And so when I read this scripture, I was like, man, God, this is talking about us. Amen. This is talking about, amen, what's going on uh, today. And there was there was time, but there there's, um, amen, there, there's times, amen, where God brought revival. And I said, thank God, amen, that the, that the man of God, Isaiah, amen, had a heart, amen, to, to invest in the children of Israel, that, that he, amen, kept his relationship with God. And God was able to give him a vision because we, we have been, amen, we have had different revivals uh, from 1730 through uh, the 40s, England and the colonies, Amen. There was there was a, a revival there in the 1820s through the 50s uh, throughout America and England. There were revivals uh, 1875 through 1885 Chicago. There was a revival there 1906 through uh, 1915 Los Angeles. Amen. Saw the um, the great Azusa revival and uh, 19. 10 through the 70s, American cities, 
amen, through New York, Los Angeles, saw revivals, no doubt, um, Billy Graham, amen, and Billy Sunday, amen, were, were in those revivals, amen, so America has experienced revivals, and, and I want to tell you this evening that, that the good news is that we can experience revival, amen, where, where you and I, as we reverence God, as we give ourselves to the Lord, amen, as we set our, ourselves aside for the Lord, amen, God can give us the revival that we want. I know it's going to be scary, amen, the, the things that I, I was reading here in Isaiah, and I'm, I'm comparing them to what's going on today, and I'm like, God, that's scary. But as we hold on to God, as we believe God, I believe God's going to pour out his spirit. I believe God's going to give us revival. But it's, it's not in the way you and I want, amen. It could be scary sometimes thinking of these things. And so Isaiah 43, 18 through 25, is, God says to his people, this is later down the road. This is later, amen, chapters and chapters, amen, pass. It says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Uh, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers, the deserts, the wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the um, Amen. The ostrich, for I will give water in the wilderness, river in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people. It goes on to say, the people whom I formed from myself, that they might declare my praise. Yet you did not call upon me, O Jacob, but you have been, amen, weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought me your sheep for burnt offerings, or honored me with your sacrifices. Amen. I have not, um, you have not burned offerings, amen, or um, frankincense. You have not brought to me sweet cane with money, or satisfied me with fat of your sacrifices, but you have burdened me with your sins, and you have wearied me with your iniquities. And it goes on to say, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, my own name's sake, and I will not remember your sins. And so that's very encouraging this evening, amen, as, you know, we, we look out, amen, as we, we see that, you know, America, England, and all these other nations have been nations of revival, amen, nations where... God has poured his spirit out on, but I just want to say something this evening. God, ha God is going to do some cutting. God is going to do some cutting to this world, amen, and, and I just want to say fear not, amen, that he knows what he's doing, and he, he brings revival in his own ways, and um, amen, I'm, I'm like, praise God, but I'm in, in, another, in another sense, I'm like, you know, church, we got to be ready. Amen. And I just want to say that, that other people are depending on us. Humanity, amen, is, is depending on, on you and I. They're depending, amen, on, on the gospel. Just thinking about Peter, you know, him denying Jesus Christ. And he denies Jesus Christ. You, you, you see Peter, and so he's hiding, amen. He even... He even uh, curses, amen, because he's afraid. And you see Peter being used by God, amen, in a powerful way. These men, they get mur martyred, amen, for the gospel. And so I want to encourage you this evening that, that God, amen, is, is doing more, amen, that you and I, See, I just want to encourage you to stay connected, amen, with, with God and his word. And we're going to see what, what God's going to do, amen. And so with that said, can I have every head bowed and every eye closed?